What is up out there, Shop Culture Land? Welcome again to another edition. Every Tuesday, you guys already know, 8.30, how we doing this, to Shop Culture. As always, I'm joined by my tag team partner, the relationship guru, Dr. Slash Mr. James R. Hill. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Oh, Not bad. it's all good. And then in the background, you guys already know who that is. <laughs> The producer extraordinaire, Nick Jones. I didn't mute my phone. Nick What's going on, Jones? Y'all? Nick Jones is in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> An honor to be here, per usual. I even got my shop coach a little bracelet. Look, look at the necklace with the with the scissor. Oh, that's new. Okay. Yo. That's all good. And I'm Barry Crosby. Welcome again. This is Shop Culture, where we talk about all things relationships, sex. More sex, even more sex than back to relationships. And well, here we are. You got the monitor so we can find out who these people are. Okay. We see everybody said good evening. V, how you doing? Hey. Miss Watkins, how you doing, lady? And it's always good to see you guys. I, you know what? And I want to say this. I hope you guys had a safe holiday. I don't really even say 4th of July. I just, right. You know, yeah. all the stuff behind it. I'm just kind of done with that. <laughs> um, so I'll say I hope everybody's holiday w- was good. Um, and we want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining and tuning in with us. We see it growing and we appreciate each and every one of you guys um, to uh, another Tuesday, man. It's another blessing. Um, man, first of all, how was your holiday? My holiday was pretty chill. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it went as planned. We got the yacht on the water and okay. tied up with some other people. I we seen, had some, I seen some how good times out there, as always. Uh, I've seen know. how you're living. Uh, I've seen uh, how you're living. Uh, it was a good time, you know, out on the water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Um, I had a, I had a, a, I had a busy weekend. A lot going on. I had to go up north to um, Arlington. So uh, I want to thank the camp. They invited me out to do some <clears throat> some haircuts, and it was a lot more haircuts than anticipated. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, it was it was great to meet people and and you know get a glimpse of of life on the other side of Washington, basically. Um, but then I have something cool. And I, oh, and, really? And I want to say this, and because my son doesn't watch, so I held it. So I talked to my son. He said, Dad, I got something to tell you. I had my first kiss. Oh, my goodness. I was like, oh, like, wow. All right. And, 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 and the way he said it, it was it was really sincere. And it was really kind of. And I, I I think I felt more proud that he felt comfortable enough to tell me that. Exactly. I don't think I could have told my dad. Exactly. Like that. As a father, that's that's a big moment. And yeah, the no biggest way. thing is that your son can come to you he, and he feels comfortable to talk to you about that. You know, yeah, and the way he the way he said it, man, it, it, it kind of like damn, you know, kind of put it in perspective our relationship and you know, how our relationship has evolved and, and uh he's definitely made me a better man, better person. So I, I love him dearly. Birthday's coming up too, so I don't know if he was trying to do get some extra birthday stuff, but anyways. So, so with that, did you go into how he reacted, how his body reacted to that kiss, and I, how he should yeah handle those feelings and emotions? Well, yes, and, and you know, and one of the things is I, I basically want to let him talk about it and me listen. Okay. Um, I think later on we're going to kind of have a little bit more of a you know a serious conversation about you know not only protecting himself but protecting the young lady that he's. You know, I, I don't want to say fall, but because I don't know at thirteen, or but interacting, he's at, interacting right. with. But uh, I am proud of him. I'm proud of how he handled the situation, and I'm really me and his mother both said it's it like he, he he handled it well, and uh, it was a lot of respect, and it was really kind of cute, man, really. 
kind of almost made me tear up a little. So it was cool. So that was exciting for me as a father. You know, we always have those experiences that makes it all well worth it. You're like, right, this is right. what I signed up for. So I signed up for it. And uh, yeah, it's cool, man. We'll continue that conversation, you know. Oh, we're going to continue. We got <laughs> I mean, so many more. <laughs> to the end. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I was like, well, shoot. You know, you get happy for a minute and then the, the parent kicks in. Like, right, right. What more do I have to worry about? And I know at 13, what I was right. doing, that yeah. first time, I, I, it wasn't just a kiss for me. Yeah, well, see. <laughs> I don't know. Do I got kids running around? <laughs> And that's that age of the accountability crisis where you're going from boy to man, your emotions and hormones are kicking in and you really need a stern direction, you know, some stern direction because you're going to follow your emotions. You're going to follow what your feelings are telling you at that age. And it's not always the right thing. It's not always the right thing, like you said. And it's so important that us as, as fathers, when we're discussing these things with our children, though, is that we always put into perspective, especially with boys, is respect the other person. Right. Absolutely. That's the utmost respect the other person's space, energy, the whole night. Um, so, yes. So, you know, and I always say, man, do better than I did. So that's kind of my. Uh, that's super dope, man. Yes. Super yes. Dope. And real quickly, guys, now I hope you guys have heard we are having our first official shop culture day party. Yeah. August 8th. I want to thank you, too, because you guys kind of took, you know, you guys took that and, and, and man, went in there and. Man, set it all up. So yeah, Doc, he executed, man. Doc was on. He'd been on it. Doc was ready to kick it, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's gonna be a good meet and greet. It's it's good, it's a real nice <laughs> venue. <got> excited. <laughs> good food and drink, you know. We're gonna have the shop culture crew there live. We're gonna have a short little discussion panel. You know, we're gonna be taking live comments. You know, you guys are tired of typing on your phones now. So we're gonna take a few live comments. We're gonna have a little interactive discussion. You think but, they're gonna be excited to meet us? So let us know. You guys gonna be excited to meet in person? <laughs> I mean, you know, make us voice, feel like somebody. The voice your comments in person and get live uh, interaction. You I know? don't like what you said on that episode. Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting. Nick, Nick are you gonna get a lot of that, Nick? I know. Ain't paying attention to me. Oh, oh no, I'm oh, the young buck that don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and there's gonna be an opportunity for you to meet all these people that are coming with you, all the other people in the group members. You know, yeah. it's just gonna be a nice meet and greet. August 8th. It's at La Familia Sports Pub and Grill. Black owned. It's a black owned. Some good friends of mine own this venue. It's totally remodeled. It's a really nice place. Great food. Great drinks. Um, free admission. We're not trying to make any money off of this. We just want people to come together, meet and greet, have a good time. Man. It'll be Sunday, August 8th at La Familia Sports Pub and Bar from 3 to 6 p.m. Man, so yeah, we look forward to each and every one of you guys going there. So, or being there, excuse me. Nick Jones. What's up? Let's get it. Oh, okay. So it's been it's been a wild weekend, Fourth Fourth of July and whatnot. So we wasn't able to get our topics in in on time the way we normally do it. So I thought um, I'd take the initiative the initiative to draw up some topics for the guys to talk about. And um, I don't know if you guys saw the Facebook post. I threw it up probably about a couple hours ago. And I thought that tonight w would be a good night to put the spotlight on us uh, as men, put us in the hot seat. All right. So, you know, ladies, you definitely are going to want to tune in tonight. Um, I'm in the podcast space, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dialed into a lot of uh, platforms, specifically black um black led black uh yeah just black black led uh podcast. facilitated right black facilitated there you go mm -hmm. facilitated uh type of platforms and one of the things that i noticed that was always a topic of discussion when we're talking about relationships and dating which is what this platform is rooted in mm -hmm. um i like it is uh the the com the, the complaints that black women have when it comes to us as black men mm -hmm. we've had the conversations here regarding women submitting and what they're not doing and what they could be doing to do better in this that or the third so it's just like well I, I thought that it would be cool for us to actually point the finger at us and you know put the just kind of like look Look at the man in the mirror, if you will, and uh, like Michael Jackson said, <laughs> and, and have just have an honest uh, uh, conversation. 
Now, this is this is a conversation that we can look at for for for, for all men. Uh-huh. I, however, just me personally, I wanted to focus the spotlight on us as black men because it's our community that I pay attention to the most. I'm not really concerned about what white men, Hispanic men, or any other genre of men are doing. Um, that's not a dig at any of those <laughs> those individuals. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just concerned about us. It's it's my community, my people, first and foremost. Okay, so what is the general consensus? Yeah, yeah. What what is where are where are as you said, men of our community not meeting the bar? Oh, what do we need? That's to something. Do? That's something right. that I and and this is why. I thought that this would be an interesting, one of the interesting topics of conversation because this would be the time for black women to chime in and answer a question such as that. So let me run, let me run down the topics real quick because we, we got about four of them and I want to get through all of them. We're not going to spend no more than fifteen minutes on each because we want to, you know, make sure within the in the the time frame. Okay. Okay. So the first topic: black men and accountability. Again. Don't be, don't get, don't get derailed off of, you know, me saying black men. Again, it can apply, to, it can apply to all men, but we want to, you know, I want, we want to focus on us here. So black men and accountability, recognizing when you fall short and owning up to your mistakes. Where are you guys at with that? That's the first topic. That's and, okay. Gonna... So again, so I can understand, are you saying a general Consensus of how we feel as black men are they standing up being accountable? Yeah, yeah. the ones I you know can talk are, about. You can talk about personally. You can talk about anecdotally or just in general. But for myself, it's a work in progress. Okay, I think for all of us, it's a work in progress, and that accountability it requires some self reflection. I mean, if you made a mistake, look at yourself from an alternate perspective, own that mistake, and hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. But don't let your ego get in the way and say, no, I'm bigger than this mistake. I didn't do it and try to place blame because that's a cowardly move. I mean, it, it's narcissistic. Yeah, it's a cowardly narcissistic move when you don't accept accountability for your actions. How do you guys translate that into relations? Because I want to still keep it, you know, focused. I on like what you're doing. Though, yeah, what, you're rooted into relationships, too. Yeah. So how does that how would that translate into a relationship setting? It could be a relationship or ma- even better, marriage. Right. Well, I mean, it's accountability is, I mean, people have alternate perspectives. So you have to come to a happy medium when you disagree. Mm-hmm. You have to give that each other that right to disagree. Okay. Within that, you need to also step outside yourself and honestly, sincerely view your actions from an alternate perspective, mm. step outside of yourself and look and and say, hey, did I do this? Is this wrong? Did I make a mistake? If you make a mistake, that's part of growing. If you don't make mistakes, you're not growing. So for someone to say, no, I didn't make a mistake. No, I didn't make a mistake. Yes, I'm always right. Well, that's you're not growing. You're limiting yourself because any mistake you make, you, you're going to learn from it. But as men, I think as men, though, I think that's probably one of our biggest issues we have is our ego. Though. Ego is huge. Because ego doesn't allow us the space, kind of, I think. I'm just talking personally <clears throat> to apologize for mistakes that are made. I mean, has that you know, happened with you? It has happened. It happens a lot of times. A lot of my failed relationships. Yeah. <laughs> Tons of and, them. And, and, you know? and a lot of times you, you feel the need to have it pointed out to you or 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 justify the reason why I think you it's more this. of a justif- justify yeah, that yeah. Comes into justifying it. to try to make it right within yourself but then a lot of times that justification is someone's thought process and how they're working through mm-hmm. it and trying to explain this is my thought process while making the decision to do that and that's where you need to be corrected because the root cause is your thought process and not the actual mistake that you made. So when you share your thought process with someone, maybe they can give you an alternate perspective Mm. and a different way Mm. to think about things you do prior to making your decision. Well, to piggyback on that though, I think it also comes from the perspective as, 
as a male if you're an alpha male too. Though. Because I think you minimize being apologetic for your behavior. You see it as kind of a rite of passage. I'm a man. I'm going to do what men do. But I think that's kind of a weakness. It's very much a weakness. It, but it, that's a lot I, for myself. It's rooted from, you know, what I considered being a man was. And, you know, it is a, it very much a weakness because that's right. not what being a man is. Being a man is being accountable. Right. Absolutely. Hey, I made a mistake. I effed up. I'm sorry. Right. Saying I'm sorry, not I made a mistake. Right. That's it. I don't know. I am sorry. And if a man does that, accept that, and also when he explains his thought process while doing that, understand that he's not trying to justify his actions as right, mm -hmm. but give you a better understanding on how he arrived at that decision. Can I read this real quick? Comments, yeah. I'm not going to be able to get through all of y'all's comments because, again, I want to keep this show, you know, we want, we want to run a tight ship tonight because these topics are important to me. I would venture to say, correct me if I'm wrong, important to the fellas as oh, well. Man, absolutely. Maybe so you, um, you did your thing on that. So... Uh, I'll just read the ones that stick out, but I'll make sure to highlight everybody's comments so that you. Or guys at least can, can we at least say the name? Or hey, if I can see the yeah, we see, right we now have our, I know for we guys. I always say this. To look at this where you can see the name. Uh, if you want, to, maybe we let Nick oh. take over this part because right, it has yeah. all the names on there for you, Nick. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, so oh oh oh, let me read this one. This one's yeah, by, this this the one. So Devin Booker said. Devin says a lot of black men don't up, Devin? each other. A lot of black men don't hold each other accountable for their actions, examples of, such as cheating, adultery. Then you definitely won't hold yourself accountable. So what do you fellas have to say to that? I totally agree with, with Ms. Booker on that. She's absolutely correct about it. We, Yes, we do, you know, we might say you're wrong, but then we're kind of laughing about it too. Like, oh, uh, well, yeah, uh, you know. So it's Well, not usually a, men will try to place blame on the woman mm, to justify their actions. She's not giving it to me enough. She didn't do this, or, you know. Right, and and cheating isn't always sexual. Intimate yeah. intimacy is, is, is cheating open. as well. Yes. One, one second, I, I got to address this real okay, quick. Okay, go ahead. Tasha, Um. so yeah, the whole premise of this show is for us to have the conversation. I'm replying to her comment where it what says, said, but they are doing all of the talking and you ask us women to weigh in. We are asking you to weigh in. That's why I just re read Devin's comment. Right now from my screen, everybody is under Facebook users. So I yes. really don't know who is man or woman. But now that I have, you know, uh, I have a phone where I can see who's um, commenting, I can now read your comments. So can I just say this, guys, you have to understand we're on seven different platforms that have changed. So when we say we can't see the names, not that we're trying to be disrespectful. We don't. So now uh, Nick is able to, so he will be able to share the names. So. And so with that, Tasha, I'll read this. You say, uh, she says, my father would humble himself and ask for forgiveness to my mom when necessary. He said he did not just leave the home. He led in saying, I am sorry, first when it was applicable. Uh, Candace says, Dr. Hill, I agree. One, reflection. Two, holding oneself accountable. Three, owning your act. Owning your actions, it's time out for excuses. That's actually, yeah, that's actually some great point. We need to highlight that. All right. Yeah. Candace great, says, great point, Candace. Candace says, I'd love to hear a man's perspective tonight. And that is what we are here to do. To help provide. Right. So, um, B says, being accountable is, oh, we can actually show her. Uh, yeah. Being accountable is very important in a relationship. Nurture, nature and nurture growing. Uh, Nature and nurture growing up will show you show up in relationships. Tongue twister, Some, bro. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm stupid tonight. Don't mind oh, me. Man, Some it's right. important uh, being raised positively. Okay. Oh and, wait, and, what? What did you, I'm sorry, uh, Nick, wait, you, I'll, I'll just leave that up there because I, I, I that. Yeah, I probably didn't read that right. <laughs> now, I want to go back over that, but real, real quick, my boy Jazzy said bullshit. Jazzy, what you saying? Bullshit on exactly, bro? Where, where is that at? That's up. Yes. Okay, sir, you need to go ahead and chime in and give us uh, you, you got the man with the later. best barbecue. I'm gonna say, it. if you ever have ja Jazzy barbecue, man, off, yeah, off the hook, but that's beside the point. Jazzy, we got to know what you're saying. Um, uh, Rakita says, Some great fathers make great men. Oh, let me let me hide that. Great, you, agree, you agree with that? Great fathers make great men, yes, absolutely, okay. because I think it takes a great man to be a great father. I think, mm, I, I, think agree. I, I, agree. I agree, I think it also takes a village, but. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Uh, this one, I don't know who this is, but I'm assuming this is from a black, a black male, black man. <clears throat> Excuse me. I learned how to own up and be accountable when I was in the army. One of the skills needed to be trained in leadership, in a leadership role to younger soldiers that I led. I think that's William, actually, because I think William was in the army. But mm, well, even yeah. still, that, great point, Will. That, yeah, yeah. As a man in general, that manages, applies. That's, that's very applicable. Right. Right. And I, I learned an important part, an important part of that when I was in the military as well, because. When I was in the military, it turned me all the way around as far as the thought process. And it wasn't just the training, but it was, I was an aircraft mechanic. So mm -hmm. the work that you do had lives. So if you made a mistake, oh, you right. don't cover it up. You come as quick as you can and say, I made a mistake. Really? Because if you don't, it could cost lives. What can we be oh. doing? You know, y'all as OGs. I see y'all as OGs. Well, not you guys way ahead of the curve and whatnot further right. than that i am right mm -hmm. now you, you, what do i say like what's wrong with you you are too big <laughs> okay no labels no too. labels no it's a, a, a <laughs> og meaning original games i know what it is i know what it is okay okay let's not be clear yeah, uh, <laughs> i digress um what are you guys doing to impart this wisdom onto younger cats such as myself and even the, the younger brothers behind me, if any at all. Barry, I know you get a lot of young cats that come in and out to get, you know, chopped up when every every day and whatnot. So I know you, you impart a lot of wisdom, you know, on those young men when certain topics of conversation come about. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think um, I was blessed that I grew up in the barbershop. In the barbershop, I, I've always just gravitated toward that. In the main reason why I stayed in this business was part of that is being able to talk to the, the older cats because they always had that information that mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and there's something enriching about that you know and that's so, because they made mistakes yes yes absolutely yes and when you make a mistake you reflect on it yes you reflect you go back what was my thought process while making that mistake and that's part of the learning process and that's what you carry forward and that's what you pass on to the younger men, you yeah. know, to, you got to self-reflect. You're going to make mistakes. That's mm -hmm. part of growing. Mm -hmm. Own that mistake. Inventory what your thought process was. Maybe you may, it may alter your thought process or actually it will. Because when you go to, the, in, when you're in a similar situation, you're going to think back to the mistake that you made. Doc, do you, I, I'm just talking off, off the, off the, to kill through there. Do you ever think about like your past film relationships of what could I have done better? Not even per se that the relationship was going to continue because sometimes relationships are not. Doesn't matter, you know, what the case might be. It just it could be time, it could be anything. But do you ever look back and be like, what could I have done? Right. Absolutely. Every single relationship I've been. I never done that until recently. I have looked back and I've sat and I've taken a long time. Mm -hmm processing the, the events that took place during that relationship and if i could have did it better if i should have done it differently yes that's that's part of the learning and growing process you have to do that mm. because if you're if you may be you even have to take that back to your childhood because if you are continuing a negative cycle that you're bringing from your childhood and that's going from relationship from to relationship you have to be able to recognize that pattern and break that cycle. That's real. It's a gem right there. That's um, why he's a relationship guru, guys. Herbalist Kevin L. Jenkins, how you What's doing? What's up, sir? Kev? How you doing, hey, man? Kevin. This is his comment. I start with my sons. There you go. Mm. That's very important. I'm glad that he, let me just leave that up there real quick. I'm glad that he put that out there because that's what it's all about, getting to the ones that are on the come up, changing the narrative and changing the guard with them right absolutely it's almost like what did coco to have to herbalist too, oh yeah so that's always huh? hey coco i wanted to read this away. is that coco so what's she, up coco coco says good e good evening coco uh in regards to accountability what if a man feels he is never wrong when you try and express concerns they turn it around on you essentially Narcissist. gaslighting gaslighting yeah that's uh that's a defense mechanism for for a weak man because his ego, his he's clouded by his ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's kind of hard to get him to 
step outside himself and look, take a look from an alternate and Coco, perspective. Run, get Ooh. away, right? It's not that's not sustainable. All right. Everyone is agreeing. They're loving the conversation so far. Um, I'm loving the conversation as well, but we're going to go ahead and keep this thing rolling. Uh, let me get to the next next topic here. I'm go as fast as I can. <laughs> Take your time. And guys, chime in. We want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in. This is Shop Culture every Tuesday at 8.30-ish. Um, remember, guys, highlight it on your calendar, August 8th. We have a big event, our first day party. We encourage everybody to, you know, come, come, check it out. Meet and greet each other. Pick up your shop culture swag. We're going to have a little of that. Look, we got the hat. <laughs> We're going to have the hat. Rocking mine. <laughs> yes, everybody. All right. Um, so let me go ahead and switch this up. Let me get my banner. Uh, boom. Are black men living up to their role in leadership? You go ahead and dissect that real According quick. According to the media, it's, it's not. I think I think uh, a lot are though, but that's just me. Are black men really living up to the expectations of the leadership role? According to the majority of black women, they are not. Mm. Black women have said that this is one of the reasons why they find it hard to submit to their man. What can black men do? What can black men be doing to live up to or exceed the leadership expectation per our women? And our community as a whole. Well, first, should we ask some of the yeah, women in this in the, in this group? Do they agree with that statement? Do they agree that black men? Ladies, are not? do y'all agree? I mean, it's on the banner right there. Do you guys do you guys agree or disagree? Chime in. Mean and until we get some some you know feedback, what are y'all thoughts on that? Well, first of all, women will gravitate towards safety, security, and stability. So if we say that again, so Stephanie that, agrees to some point. Okay. Women will gravitate towards a man that shows safety, security, and stability. Um, even to the point where they're turned on by that because they feel that that's a safe place mm -hmm. for them to rest their heart. Mm -hmm. Part of that security and stability is a man with a plan. If you can set a goal and make a plan to achieve that goal, if she sees you have a plan in place, it's easier for her to get on that on board with your plan and, and support you and help you to achieve that goal and be part of that plan. But she has to see safety, security, stability, and consistency in your actions. But what are some of the some of the characteristics of leadership though? Awesome because Coco what? just asked that question. Who? Coco oh just asked that Coco so, stop trying to steal my thunder. Y'all are on the same way. So Coco <laughs> they, they about to dig into I, that yeah. right now. We're the host. I'm the host. You you stay with I'm like no that's put that up there. I didn't what, read her read her comment. How about you all explain what you feel a man's role or what characteristics depict a leader in a relationship? A leader in a relationship sets direction for that re for everyone involved for that family unit. You first of all, you set security. You show that you are trustworthy. You make sure that everyone in that family unit is safe and secure. That everyone is provided for financially, emotionally. Um, you're setting a direction. You're communicating, and when I say communicating, that's talking and you're listening. You're not listening just to respond or come up with a, a, a witty snapback, but you're actually listening to the needs of everyone in that family unit, and you're incorporating that into your direction of your family plan. That's great, man. That's a leader, and Ooh. that should be supported. Don't give, uh, we can't Ooh. give you guys no more. You guys ain't paying no money. This is why this man... It's a wildfire. Man, come on. <laughs> That's why he's the dog. I'm just trying to help. Man. Come on. You, come on now. Now, yeah. now what's, what's your take, B? Bro, that's everything he just said. Oh. Man, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't follow up because I, I totally agree with that. But I will ask you, though, of all of that, what is the most important? Because you did say the financial aspect. Yeah. Is that the most important? No. Okay. That's maybe one-fourth. One-fourth. Yes. What is the most important? consistency in your actions and, and I, I, I 
Absolutely. And, and I'm going to say this and probably well, consistency both sides, because yes. that's, that's what always seems to be lacking. And, uh, and, and it's true. Too, right. Though. Right. I mean, as men, we always criticize and critical. Well, she wasn't consistent. She used to do this three months ago. And then right. the, the lady saying the same thing about you. Right. You're not consistent either. And you if they have... see inconsistency, then the stability falls. The stability you're, you're, you're unstable is, is... if you're not consistent in your actions. Let me mm. say this real quick. Candace says, I agree with everything Dr. Hill just said, but you've got to implement spiritual covering as well. Mm. Good, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where would that be in line? Because I think that that's, that's at the top. Uh, okay. That's at the top. And I, I, I almost was going to say. But just because this isn't a spiritual platform, I usually don't cover, cover that. that yep. But so let's assume that goes without saying that it's spiritually based. And you, I mean, you live a Christian lifestyle. I say I live a Christian lifestyle. I don't go to church every day. I mean, but yeah. I live a Christian based lifestyle. Well, you have a Christian principle. Yes. Uh, but spirituality, we should always still mention it because I have noticed that I, I wasn't mentioning it, but yet I do have a spiritual connection. Right. Um, right. So you live least, right. You live right. You at least you, you're, you're well, dedicated or trying. What, 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 what she said? She was saying, what, what? what the hell is going on? Because Barry and I have been agreeing a lot lately. Well, you finally came to your senses. Like, that brother, <laughs> that brother, that brother, you, see, I had a, you see the ego? <laughs> I had to show you the ego. That's the I'm ego waiting, coming up. I'm waiting. You. I'm playing. No, it's me too. No. Um, okay. So this is from, I believe, the herbalist, uh, Ke Kev, right? Kev? Yeah. I think this is him saying. Now go visit Kev, man. He, he got the good stuff, man, guys. Support him. So his take is we first have to see what their understanding of men's role or leadership mm. is. Not everyone's understandings is right. Okay. And exactly. And once oh. the, once you see where he's going, what his plan is, what his goal. I mean, if he's 40 years old and he's trying to start a record company or a rap career, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go down that road. You know? wait, 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 wait. So you just go elsewhere. Wait, what did you say? 40 years old? Yeah. Okay, I would have to agree. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because <laughs> you can easily get behind the scenes and coach the youngster. Yeah, you got the right. Time. I, but you talking about pumping your big state, nigga. I'm not no, listening to that. No, no, okay. So, so, okay, so you're saying if he's the artist. Right. Because if he has an entrepreneurial spirit and he's going out there. You can be, you could have a realistic no. entrepreneurial spirit. But see, then, then, then we're back to the stability. Because a lot of oh, men have an okay. entrepreneurial spirit, will quit their job to pursue their dream. And a lot of women will see instability in that when it comes to the kids. And you're looking at medical benefits and you're looking at mm. purchasing a house. And mm -hmm. that's not a stable plan, you know, because you're going out there on your entrepreneurial dream. That, lot, I mean, that, that, I, you're right. Yeah. But then, see, the man, see, this is where we go back and forth, because the man's like, well, I have a plan. It's just not a, maybe a well-thought-out plan. Right, and if she sees that, it, that it's not a well-thought-out, and that the end goal is where she wants to be, that's where you tap out. Mm. Tap out. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you, V. Uh, Devin says, he first has to have a plan for me to follow. Many men want to leave but aren't taking you anywhere. And I think you guys already got mm -hmm. spoke to that. That was a uh, per Devin. But Devin, there are some men there. Man, they're they're there. He's gonna okay. Be. Uh, for 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 a lady, which a lady says that, right? This is what kind of I always get thrown off. Because aren't there men out there that do have a plan, but they might not be to the likings of the person? That Ooh, absolutely, that's a good point. Because I always hear well, that. Well, oh, he, he, no men that got no plans and all that. Well, I know quite a few. But they're five three, maybe five four. Might not be your height requirements. Right. Might not be your your look requirements. But they got the plan. That's right. a topic of another. Okay. Because I don't want you to this okay. up. Well, well, a lot of men will will have a goal. This is where I want to get, and not know how to formulate a plan. They may have a good goal. They may have the resources to achieve that goal, but can't put together a solid plan. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be in a relationship then. Until well, they well, that, they, that, that's that where out. that's Jones where the woman my, brings yeah. value. I, I agree with you. She may be able to bring value and help him formulate that plan. She can if all of the resources are there, you got the, you have the tools. You just don't know how to use them. She may be able to help you to use those tools to put that plan together. And that's where she'll sit up and look at you and go, well, mm. where's your leadership role? Because I shouldn't be helping you put this whole thing together. You should be, as a man, with your bare hands, structure. you're writing mm -hmm. out the blueprint and you're building the structure. 
I come in and I help stabilize said structure. But if I'm over here down in the toolbox with you trying to, you know, figure out how to put this together because you don't know how to use the damn tools. No, no, no. She's going to look at you in a certain light. Right. She might love, she'll love you and all of that. But in the back of her head, she's going to look at you like what the. Yeah. Well, maybe all he needed, well, maybe all he needed was the tools to be organized. And if she organizes those tools for him, and keeps them organized and let him go to work. You got I, don't know, got I don't know no man who don't know his toolbox and how to organize his. Oh, no, no, Nick. But Nick, I know yourself. I know yourself. Nick, 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 we should be balancing each other's weaknesses is what it really comes mm -hmm. down to. Right. Per Stephanie and what I believe you're, Doc, Doc you're saying. said it, uh, implied it. Right. Um, I'm going to read a couple more and then we're going to go to the next topic. They should communicate their shortcomings and the woman can help. Uh, a woman can bring slash value, bring value slash balance. It goes both ways. Right. Yes. Uh, that's that, part that. of being a helpmate. Per Angela How you doing, Stevens. Angela? Hey, Angela. How you doing? All right. Some plans and goals do not align with everyone. You need to find a leader who leads in a manner that works with your personal plans, oh, goals, and liking. Cool, cool. Exactly. That's why that's part of that leadership. If you're leading that family unit into this direction, you have to consider everyone's input. You have to put what everyone wants and incorporate into that to make to formalize that goal and that plan. Right. Because mm. what are the um, Herm Edwards, football coach? Yep. He uh, said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just wishing on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was... I'm going to read this one, then we're going to go to the next topic. Tasha says, most visionaries are not are not implement, it um, is. implemented. It should be a team effort, hence why, biblically, we are to be the helpmate. The you helpmate. Have to have, yeah, the helpmate. And you have to have similar beliefs, too. And, and so that's uh, that's so important. All right. I like what Angela said real quickly. Let me go on that. Help him organize his tools and dreams build the house. Ooh. Dreams build that house. I feel like I, 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 say I, I feel like I think okay. that see that's the OGs right there. That's like you know my mom and grandma and them thought process, but the women today they're not thinking like that. They don't. Yeah. A lot of them. I'm not gonna say all of them, but a lot of them don't think like that. Really. They just don't. Well, that's so why the, we're trying to share. That's why we're trying to share. So, but, uh, yeah, I, but, I'm, so just, I'm just saying. Real quickly, that, that I, I want to – Nick, they already want you to have – They want you, for the most part, to have it all together. Really? Every all single, together. Then for, for one the reason, part. then why would why he need would her? Why would you need her then? I'm just telling y'all what, what's going on out here. Well, do you find yeah, that problem – oh, No, but you find that problematic. Help him organize his tools uh, – Hold on, because I want to make sure I'm on the, on, I'm staying on track here. Help him organize his tools and dreams, build a plan. You have women that will do that, but now with what's going on today, with you know my generation more so, the one behind me, they don't want to help you organize a damn thing. They want you to have it all put together. Those are the the, the dudes that they tend to gravitate to. gravitate towards, and then they figure, and then once that happens. Uh, they end up getting heartbroken or some <laughs> slung through the mud because they're going after the dude that did have it all, have it put together and whatnot. But that's the man who has a vast array of options. Right. Where you're and, not the only... And for him to get there, there was a woman who supported him and helped him formulate that that's plan to get to where he's at. We gotta, you know, we got to do a show and <coughs> have young women on. Cause I, I, I want to dive into that, but we need to get going. So okay, someone says it's called it's called entitlement. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I that's think crazy. Good. I think maybe I think Tasha said that. Nick, Nick gonna end up with a, a fifty. Let me stop. <laughs> <Nick gonna get. laughs> All right, next topic. This is going along smoothly. Uh, man, my phone keeps going to sleep. <laughs> All right, so tap in, guys, guys, every Tuesday, eight thirty ish. Shop culture, man, share, like. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're, we're coming, guys. We're coming. <laughs> now you, we talk about building dreams. Build our dreams. Help us build. <laughs> it's not just us. Help us help. Right. Come on. <laughs> All right. So the next topic. 
black men, misogyny, toxic, toxic oh. masculinity, and setting the standard. Okay. All right. So, black men, misogyny, toxic masculinity, and setting the standard. Are we bridging the gap in keeping ourselves in check in regards to those terms? Mm. Will we continue to contribute to those terms? Mm. How are we unlearning what society has taught us and reconstructing to be a better man? In reconstructing to be a better man. That's a lot there. Yeah, that that is a lot. Yeah. And um well what okay, let's 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 kind of compartmentalize it. Where are you guys at with the whole viewpoints of toxic masculinity. I think they're overstated a lot. Um, and they're terms. They're, they're, they're just terms. Um, right. Those are terms and stereotypes and categories that men are put into. But what constantly. it comes down to is every man needs a positive circle of friends, of brothers, to bounce things no. off of. No. And that takes me to a Bible verse, Candace, if you're still there, Proverbs mm -hmm. 27, 17. You know, I don't so mean to be sure. quoting Bibles. No, please. please. <laughs> Bible Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. it takes man to sharpen another man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the reason why I zeroed in on those terms, because again, I'm going off of what I'm hearing a lot of the sisters talk about and how they oh, associate yeah. us with those terms. Mm -hmm. So... No, Nick, yeah, I'm not, we're not disagreeing. We no, just, no, 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 yeah, we, we, we like your context, yeah, right. We want to hear that. Um, do Again, I always like to ask our viewers that are women, obviously. Ladies, please chime in. Chime in on I, that because. Because this is more so for you. I mean, the guys are going to, they're going to talk and, and you, give their. And us yeah. in this type of life. And I'm, there are a lot of misogynistic men who deliver that toxic masculinity. And ladies, that's not the standard. Because. Hmm. I, I've talked to people, i talked to women who date outside of the black race, who have dated in the black race, mm. and it, it was, I was told, and it, 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 it lit a light in my head that I had never thought about, mm -hmm. is that black men get to a certain level, I mean, it may not be a high dollar level, but they show up and think that's all they have to do. They just Whoa. have to show up. Ooh. Oh. And they really think that they are the prize. What? And a lot of black women are not on board with that. No, you are not the prize. Ooh. You may have your stuff together, brother, but you're not the prize. That doesn't give you the right to demean anyone or expect a woman to jump through hoops to get with you, to stay with you, to satisfy you, or to... Um, entertain you or whatever no 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 you you're call not my mother a liar <laughs> my mom said about me but, but but you're right though a lot of us do have this and i'm gonna be honest but right. i had it yeah. i had that same mindset uh -huh. and that's why my son mom said i'm done with this yeah my brother's off the hook right see and you, i and i and i agree with her so yeah. you think about it and this is real yeah you have to stand up you have to show up you have to show out and you have to be consistent with your positive actions and you got to view it as an equal footing you can't just think about yourself and have this selfish mentality right yes. okay so this is tasha's comment define toxic masculinity and she says she's okay. never heard of that which is very interesting yeah but i heard it like all talking. the time i feel like i've heard you say it a couple times <laughs> <laughs> it's about Tasha, four or five but... means <laughs> yeah but she says i just know that the mission of slavery in america was to demasculate our men and they've been successful, unfortunately. And I would agree with the latter part of that uh, statement. I'm going to go ahead and read what uh, toxic masculinity is. Okay. Described That's by good. Terry uh, Coopers, K-U-P-E-R-S. He describes it, he Professor or she. At, uh, yeah. You know who that is? Yes. Okay. So they describe it uh, as this. Toxic masculinity as involving the need to aggressively compete and dominate others. And this and as the constellation of socially regressive male traits that serve to foster domination, the, 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 de, the, de, the devaluation of women, homophobia, and wanton violence, W-A-N-T-O-N, -N, I think I'm saying that word mm -hmm. right. So that's, that's, that, that's pretty much what it is, Tasha, just to give you, again, context. Uh, let's go ahead. That's what Shop Talk is all about. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Devin says she views some like that if the shoe fits. Mm. 
Malika, she agrees. Boy, everything that's said, or what, like, oh, when people say that, I was like, no, what exactly? She just says facts, oh, okay. so I assume yeah. okay. she's agreeing with everything. Uh, wish we could do away with generalizations. All men are uniquely made in a product of their environment. Um, I'm not even going to try yeah. to say that. Uh, thank you. I actually did not know the term. I appreciate you reading it. Okay, Tasha. Uh, Candace says, there's nothing wrong with the man feeling as if he's the prize as long as he understands that I'm the gift. Together we can build. Hashtag forward march. And let's just expand on that, though, because I think that. Doc is ready. Yeah, Doc. <laughs> expand on that. You're ready. You know where I'm going to go he with this. ready. Right? Yeah. Go ahead, Doc. Okay. Go ahead. Let Doc. him fire yeah. off on all pistons. Let him go. I, I agree <laughs> with part of that. But when the man shows up as I am the prize, then. He doesn't need a gift because he's the gift. He's the pride. That's a narcissistic, Ooh. misogynistic man who thinks that every woman has got to jump through hoops, lay down the red carpet in front of him because, oh, I showed up. I'm here. I'm man, pretty much. You should be, be proud chest, to I'm be man, yeah. in my presence, and I don't have to do anything. Yeah, you're a gift. Okay, a, a gift is a bracelet. I want to open it. It's beautiful. Unwrap it, put it on my arm, and I'm going to keep going. But I am the prize. And that's a misogynistic way. But see, that's a man putting himself on a pedestal. There's nothing wrong with that, putting yourself up there. But when you meet someone, you have to put it right up there on that pedestal right beside you. Come on. All right. Tasha, hashtag, I'm the prize and the gift. <laughs> Stephanie says it exists, but the that it's definitely not the standard. Uh, these terms are used by women, by many women who want a woman with a dick <laughs> anytime a woman actually steps into the role of being a man, leader, etc. Then all of a sudden the men are toxic, misogynistic, etc. I absolutely hate those terms. I'm I'm with her. I, I'm with I, her I, on yes, that. Totally yeah, agree with you, Steph. I agree. Great point. True, Doc. Some also feel they don't need to work on a relationship and sees the cup half empty. Are we, are women taking accountability here in this episode while we're addressing us? No. I, I always, it yeah. sounds like it's a beautiful thing if they are. I feel like that's what's going on. Um, <laughs> I, but we want, I want to see how many are going to talk about this episode tomorrow. Uh, like, right? Because that's what I'm right. I agree with Stephanie and she's not wrong. I see it a lot. That was for That was from Becca and Tasha. And Candace says uh, she was speaking through the lens of light human. Yes, we understand, but right. we just wanted we, we just because we want to expand on something. There's not we're not saying you're incorrect. We just want to expand on that on that uh, that topic there. Okay. Um, so, fellas, do you guys think that we are you know by and large bridging the gap and checking ourselves with you know the whole the terms of misogyny and, and toxic masculinity and a narcissistic man, no. But the average person, I don't think you could put into any of those boxes. Okay. The average mm. man is seeking to grow, um, is seeking to learn. Enlightenment. Yeah, mm. enlightenment. You can tell, ladies, you can tell by a man is willing to learn because he has an open mind. He's willing to listen. He's, he's willing to take on information about things he has no idea of uh, because he wants to learn about it. He just doesn't want to talk about himself and what he can do for you and what you can do for him or what you should do for him and how a woman can enhance his life. And if she needs to be with you because of this, you know, it, commercializing yourself. You don't need to advertise, brothers, you know. I would say Your like, actions will speak for themselves. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you go. There I you would go. also say, is he able to handle constructive criticism? That's a good one. Very is he good. able that's to handle very, that? Very, very good. I can that's good the question. most telling fact about. Almost anybody, but I will also say mostly about a man. If it's constructive, mm -hmm. can he handle that? Right, or, or will he view it as constructive, or is, he, as or is he just immediately putting up that defense mechanism? Now, you know? I will go on the other spectrum. Do you think that, and it's all about delivery? I understand that. Mm -hmm. Do you think women handle constructive criticism well? No, that's me. Generally, no. No, I don't think so. And no, like you said, it's all about delivery. You have to be very, very careful about your delivery. It's all about and delivery. Here we go. Tasha says, but it's how you do it. And 
She also says, are you criticizing to build him or break him? Great point. Right. Great point. Exactly. Make it constructive. Bring out the constructive part before you bring out the criticism part. This is good. I think, can we, we got a minute to talk about this because we're going over this is this one's wet. This part, it's very important because it's constructive criticism is going to happen. Any situation, whether or not you're in a relationship, everyday life, it's going to be something. And a lot of times it is the most important factor. I always think and, and say it is, is, is the, the delivery. Right. Right. Because a lot of people will take constructive criticism and have to really process it and say, why are you he, telling me this? Right. Is he bashing? Is he hating? It? What is it? Which is why you want to bring out the positive aspects first. Can and can I take it another step further? Please do. The reason why I brought this up. Guys, we do this show. Shop culture. And one of the things, the reason why we do this show, right, is to have communication, talking about relationships from the male perspective. So we had, last week, we had some criticism about what we put up on okay. the show. Right, right, right. We did. Was it, and this is what I want to ask the people that criticize. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was constructive on how it was? Um, enlighten me on exactly what that was. I, well, I will ask Nick because Nick was a part of that situation. Mm-hmm. So and, a lady threw up a post or it was a post that Doc had threw up in regards to just giving advice to the ladies as far as what they can do to, I guess, better navigate their situation in their relationship. It's something in the vicinity thereof. I, I don't really remember word for word, obviously, but she immediately, the lady that I'm speaking on right now, uh, it seems as if she blazed past the, you know, the information that was given, the gems, and she went straight to well, why are y'all always talking about, you know, what women need to do? But I guess it's because it's barbershop and it's it, it's barbershop talk amongst men. So, you know, you guys are always right and we don't need to. It, it, she just had a, uh-huh. the way she, it, it was like lightweight shade. It wasn't right, even right, criticism. Okay. She was, it sounded like she was coming from a place of, of hurt. And so I went in and I addressed it and I told her, look, you're not paying attention to the platform every week because every week Doc himself, you know, as we end the show, gives awesome advice as to how black or not just black men and women, but men and women in general can better themselves first and foremost so that they can come together and bet each other properly and go about these, you know, go about a relationship, companionship in a, you know, positive uh, like manner. And she just made it seem like we were just dumping on the ladies and wasn't t- speaking on men and holding men accountable. And I took issue with that. So I so, addressed her as such. That's, so, what, and, speaking and, to. Well, that's okay. what I'm getting at is that. That is not constructive. That was just bashing. She did. If you if she wanted to be constructive, she would have had some ideas on something we could have shared that saying. would have been helpful for her. And, and that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Let's let's use it. This is, and I always think this is a teachable, learnable moment. Absolutely. Now, whether or not you want to use it, that's your prerogative. But like you said, if we're accountable, why why can't everybody else be accountable? Absolutely. Right. Let me read these off, and then we'll get to the last uh, uh, topic. I try my best to take criticism. How else can I get better? But I was a tomboy. That is mm-hmm. per Letitia Miller. Miss Miller, how you doing, young lady? All right. And then Candace says, I'm usually okay with conservative criticism. Excuse me, conservative criticism, but I but I be tripping, so I'm careful and go back to the reflection and owning my actions, like Dr. Hill mentioned earlier. Uh, Angela says it was not constructive criticism. It was it wasn't constructive criticism. However, it was in, intercepted by Coco, and that was constructive criticism to all parties. And Angela is right. I did see Coco under that thread and I appreciate Coco yep. for that. Yep. So, and then someone says she has a right not to go back on the page. I, yeah, apparently she ducked the page and left and then came back. You know, you know so I don't know. I thought it was weird. Um, Tasha says, this is Tasha's uh, comment. I did not handle constructive criticism well due to my own personal triggers and traumas, which is not the critique's uh, issue. Critics issue. I think that's what she's saying. Once. I own my own damage and repaired the lenses through which I see people. It changed my receptivity. 
to <laughs> criticism. Uh, now uh -huh. I see criticism. Now I see criticism because it helped me grow and become better. And Great. Like, and like Carl, Dr. Carl Dyer says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at seem to change. Oh yes. That lady was destructive, not constructive. I agree, Tasha. Yep. Uh, Candace says some people like to take over a platform that isn't theirs to begin with, mm -hmm. missing the point because of their own agenda. Oh, Thank boy. you. Candace and I wish that I could pin this damn comment. Can you pin it? Uh, you can, but I wish that I could. <laughs> uh, I got bashed by my buddy for my social media posts. I just nodded and smiled and moved the hell on. Uh, Uncle says, "Thank you, thank you, Carl." Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Thank you. We we really do appreciate constructive criticism, and that's all I've always tried to maintain. Because if you notice, we try to. I, I we get a lot of stuff. We really try to handle it and make sure there's no disrespect. Um, but, you know, taking shots at it and then talk about you care about black. Well, you know, it's just kind of, I don't know, condescending, I always say. But This is per the herbalist. That's interesting. I feel like I am the prize, but it doesn't oh. mean I want to dominate and control a woman. This belief, this belief keeps myself in check and not mm. settle. I don't chase... Or try to make something happen. To me, it's positive. I've been left or divorced for financial reasons, and I put this person on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I realize I deserve better, and now I've used these last six years to become a better man all around financially, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the herbalist. That go. is a great point. Absolutely. He so worked on himself. He worked on himself. To work on himself. So he does have a right to deserve your prize when you put in the work. Absolutely. And he said, "Hey, I put in the work." Yeah, and I, I said. There's nothing wrong with saying that with being the prize and knowing that you're the prize, but that woman is also a prize. Yes, also a prize. And he's not taken away from the woman. He's not right. taken away from anything. He's like, no, I am the prize. Great point. Okay. Um, ladies, how are you guys feeling about this conversation as a whole so far? I think it's been pretty insightful. I think you got, I think that the fellas are giving you that you you ladies. Uh a wealth of information. So please continue to chime in if there's anything that we are missing or need to address. I mean, you guys talk about it amongst yourselves it. every day. You guys are in the group talking about it. Even when I throw up my wild ass posts, uh, somebody always has something to say in regards to, you know, in uh, regards to said post. So this is your time to shine. Well, I this is your say, time to, you know, be heard. I want to give a shout out. To and if you guys please can shout out to Nick Jones, man, because he uh um this is he put this together and uh I think and I was skeptical. I'll be honest we with you. We had a back and forth. We and Nick had a back and forth about <laughs> it. And I'm gonna just go briefly what my thoughts are. When I see issues in shop culture, I look at it as men and women type of thing. I don't really necessarily see it as black. I right. want to. I want to make sure that we're able to talk about relationships because relationships are not just race related. You know, right. relationships are relationships among people. And as you know, this conversation went on, we said we got to talk about this on air. On air. So, hey, Liz. And so, props out to Nick Jones on the way he he was able to kind of navigate this. Yeah. What, and I what, think there's a read lot that of comment. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't take it any. I didn't take anything as a negative. I felt some women. I fe I felt I feel some women have selective listening. Then took it to a more personal level. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it's often the case. Oh, oh no, no, see, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> not all, not all, not all, but it is often the case. I appreciate oh. you speaking on this topic out loud. Bravo. Thank you, Tasha. I believe that was from her, Candice. This is great. Angela Simmons, I like it. Right, yeah. Coco, I love it and appreciate you all listening and changing the narrative. This is exactly what I was going for. Thank you, Coco. I, I really do appreciate that 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 comment. I love the talking points and the structure of conversation. And oh, was it saying hi? Um, hi. This is Tasha. Being willing to publicly have this conversation truly shows personal accountability and that the producers slash hosts of this show have community awareness and are good black men who reflect on themselves. Oh my goodness, I'm a fan. Oh <laughs> thank you, Tasha. We I, I appreciate that. I really we appreciate that. 
Uh, Nick, I appreciate your love of Black people and Black culture and making sure we give focus to us. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Because really, that's, you know, that's what it's all about. We have to. We got to do this work, especially us as men. It, it just, it has to be done. We are the head. So leadership is important. Right. Absolutely. Right. So um, I, I think we need to further this. And I have a. I want to talk. I, I think we need to further this. I think we okay. have a good topic, okay. but I want to save it for next week. Okay. You know, want, this yeah. is this is the last one. We got to get it in because Doc wanted to, you know, talk about it. It was a post oh, I threw oh, up earlier. Oh, okay. And uh, let me go ahead and switch the banners. Uh, you know, I got to stay on top of. <laughs> now, this isn't really specifically in regards to black men, but uh, men. Period. So. The last topic is modern men aren't it either. We often hear about everyone's gripes, mainly men's gripes regarding the modern day woman. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a post that I saw today and I shared into a group where saying? a lady, a chick was just like, you know, men don't cook, they don't fish, they don't hunt, they don't know how to fix cars, <laughs> they don't do shit. <laughs> so that's basically what this topic is. Modern men aren't it either. They're not handy. They can't cook, can't fish. Overall, just not self-sufficient, according to some women today. What are y'all's thoughts on well, that? Well, how does that make you modern? That, yeah, I don't... I guess. Well, because she's talking about, again, anytime you hear me say the term modern men or modern women, we're talking about women and men and women of today. And to further peel back the layer on that, we're talking... It gets into the whole generation. So we're not talking about Generation X or... The generation before that, this largely has to do with millennials and Gen Z. Okay, so mainly why millennials and Gen Z don't know how to do these things yeah, at all. is because can, okay, go ahead. they didn't have that positive male influence oh, in go. their so upbringing. That, that's that's that. They that's didn't what... have the fathers, the uncles, the the older gentlemen in the community to take them camping, fishing, hunting. When my when I got my first car, my dad paid fifty dollars for it and huh. said, "There's your car. <laughs> you better go get your uncle the mechanic to teach you how to get it running." And another thing, we have moms taking these boys to the barbershop too, and that's just part of the experiences that are missing that they don't get to see this type of information. Right, and and that's that's the thing you see because. I, I wouldn't say that the, these aren't great mothers who are raising their kids They're to be great job. adults. They're doing a signing job. But where are the brothers at? Exactly. Where are the men at? I mean, and like, I've said this so many times, they need that positive male influence in their upbringing to take them fishing, to take them camping, to show them how to paint a room, <laughs> to show them how to change that's a tire. Funny, you know, and that's why these younger I'm millennials and Gen time. Xs yeah. have this this level of entitlement that that things aren't that things aren't supposed to be hard and that comes mm. with work ethic and everything they have no work ethic and a lot of it is I'll because work ethic it should have been up there too right a lot of them that's a good point work are ethic. really smart young people who are making really good salaries who are grow up to be 30 and 35 years old and they're still boys. Now I can go on and on and on and on and on about okay, yeah. how this came to be throughout the generations. Um, when the men went to war, kids stayed home. Mm -hmm. When they came home, they were with their fathers. Um, I could go, but that's a whole nother. A whole nother but even discussion. as a parent, I don't think we as parents, I know myself, I had to kind of be like, like even chores or even certain things is we're not putting those responsibilities on our kids. We got to do a better job at that. Absolutely. So it kind of starts. It don't kind of. It does. It starts with us as parents. And we talk about accountability. Right. And I'm, I work that with my grandson. He's 10 years old. He's 11 years old. And every yeah. time he comes over, it's like, Papa, what project are we yeah, working on? That's First thing in the morning, we're cooking eggs. I'm showing him how to cook breakfast. That, showing right him how to take I care of your him. sister, your mother. Um, yeah, you get up, you cook the egg, you watch this. We're going to we'll clean up the garage. We're going to make a dump run. We're going to do this, that, and the third. And he's growing up with that work ethic, how to do things. Shoot, like we, don't have, we don't have them making their bed or nothing. I anymore. love that, Doc, because I don't have kids yet. But when I do, and if I end up having sons, that's exactly what they, that's the type of time I'll be on with my boys. You got to do that, man. Right. And that's what my dad to, did with me. Yeah. And my dad did it under the preface of never depend on a woman to feed uh -huh. you. 
Ooh. He said, get in the kitchen, boy. Come you got to say that again, man. He said, never depend on one because if you don't know how to cook and a woman gets upset at you, first thing she's going to hold against you, she's going to get to your belly. She's not going to cook for you. Right now you sitting up here eating pork and beans out the can because you can't cook. Just um, laying up and being dependable on a feet. Excuse me, because they have a, a, a no, lot of modern day women have a problem with the term female, too. Oh. Ooh. I won't say that, Ooh. but uh, a lot of women, uh, yeah, they, 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 I tend to see that they, they have these boyfriends that they are raising, babysitting. Uh -huh. Topic. They're, 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 yeah, that, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, keep it. That, keep but that, it, it ties into what Doc is saying. Yeah. You, you, you know, because I know young that men, too. Young men, mm -hmm. men in general, do not need to be laying up under or depending on a woman or anything. 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 Right. And then when you get to the the Gen X's and millennials who have this sense of entitlement, they get with the woman who with the nurturing spirit, uh -huh. and, they, and they seem they seem to fit together. But she's coddling him. Yep. And it, because mm -hmm. he sees that mother instinct in, and he thinks it's entitled. And some of these kids are making six figures. Wow. Some are making three or four hundred thousand a year writing code and driving. To, but he doesn't know what it takes to be a man. So they're 35 year old. Uh, I say they're socially socially inept. inept absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, guys, we got to we're coming to the ending. We can keep going. But no, we're going we're going we're going to sit on some of this, guys. And we have their closing remarks. No. We don't want to get to run. Oh, oh, I see yeah, Andrea. Yeah, in. yeah. Uh, like, um, I do got some, have some clothes. Let me, yeah, yes. let me go ahead and change up the banners. Uh, you know, you got so many comments coming through. X, Y, and Z. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's not them. It's you saying it's y'all. It's the millennials and the <laughs> individuals behind y'all. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I can agree to that to some degree. Um, let me go ahead and get this banner off. We are now at the end of the show. We got to get the, you know, the final thought. Doc, you're up. Take it away. Kill it, kill it Doc. We appreciate y'all tuning in. And I want to say to caption this whole episode is, fellas, just because you have man parts on your body does not make you a man. Woo! A lot of women and, and a lot of people don't like the term real man. Well, a real man steps up. He handles his responsibility. He doesn't step out. He holds himself accountable for his action. He sets goals. He makes a plan to achieve those goals. And he is consistent in his actions and also cautious with his reactions. A lot of us are in jail right now because you reacted improperly. You let someone's words affect your Absolutely. actions. Yep. Don't let some give someone that power over you to let their words control your actions. Be in control of your faculties. Look at the prize, look at the big picture and know if you have a plan to achieve that goal, that there are people that are dependent on you. So think wisely and act accordingly. Man. Woo! That tied I almost in want beautifully us, to yeah, the, the, the discussion. Yeah, I yeah. almost want us to put that up. If we can, the last remarks, we really need to do a post about that. Guys, that's why he's the doc. But well, they want a part two. Already. Yeah, we know you want a part two. <laughs> yeah. About to, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to yes, yeah. <laughs> this is Shop Culture, guys. Once again, we want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in every Tuesday at 8 30. Um, moving forward, guys, please mark in your calendar August 8th. We have the day party 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Come on. It's going to be an interactive discussion. It's going to be a meet and greet, food and drinks, a lot of fun. Guys, don't miss it. And now the last thing, support the show. Make sure that you like and share Shop Culture. We have multiple platforms. So make sure you guys let us present be known. We're trying to build. We talked about it. And we're growing. Thanks we, to we you. We said building relationships. This is a relationship we have with you each Tuesday, every Tuesday at 830. Ish. So guys, ace. <laughs> Shop Culture ish. <laughs> So, guys, thank you once again for tuning in to Shop Culture. That's it. We love y'all. We appreciate you tuning in. Mark your calendar yes. August 8th. Come take your pictures with us. Get your Shop Culture yes. swag and engage in the discussion. It's going to be a good one. Like I always say, be blessed or stay safe, whichever one. One love, y'all. All right. Stay safe. Be blessed. Come on. And we.